we're going to talk about FHA loan today. Hello everyone, welcome to FHA loan part two. So we're going to review a little bit about what we did last week. So last week we talked about FHA part one. Um, today we talk about part two. So what is the minimum down payment requirement for FHA loan? Please yell out if you know the answer. People on the Zoom too. 3.53. 3. 3.5%. Yay, thank you. You guys got it? Who qualify for FHA loan? Everyone. 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 Anang, you're so good. Who, yeah. as, as long as you buy or own the <laughs> occupied property, Anang, you're really good. Where to apply for FHA loan? I, I know Jao. Yeah. The Pacific <laughs> Way. Pacific Way. Pacific Way. That's the, my favorite yeah. answer. Okay. Does non borrower spouse need to provide credit report? Yes or no? No. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Only FHA loan, non borrower spouse. Answer, so he goes. <laughs> 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 Only two options. Only two options. The first wrong is the second right. <laughs> you are very smart. <laughs> so we have to provide credit report, even the the borrower, the, the wife or the husband not on the loan for FHA loan. Okay. And then we need. Now we, not, uh, we just remind you that we need at least two traditional credit score, okay? Um, normally, we, each of us has three credit score, but for some reason, if we run the credit report and it only shows two, that's okay too. And now you have anything to say? <laughs> <laughs> okay, for cash out transaction, <laughs> no mortgage late in the previous 12 months, okay? For refinance, rate and term, it's okay to have one late payment. Or for a purchase loan, we, it's okay to have one late payment. But for refinance cash out, no late payment. Wow. It's the required. Medical collection and charge of account with balance may be excluded from the liability or debt. So it, that, that's why we said FHA loan is easier than conventional loan. Uh -huh. Tax lien, uh, delinquent <coughs> tax debt may remain unpaid if the borrower has entered into a valid repayment agreement and has made at least timely payments for three months of scheduled payment. So this is really easy condition, right? Judgment collection must be paid prior to closing. Okay, BK, uh, ch chapter bankruptcy chapter 7, 11, and 13, uh, two years from discharge date. Normally for, um, for FHA loan, it's easier. Like you can get the FHA loan right away after two years of discharge date for bank uh, bankruptcy. And for foreclosure and short sale, we le require three years after uh, the, the settlement uh, completion date, okay? So bankruptcy is better than foreclosure? Yeah, foreclosure is only hard. For conventional loan, it takes seven years. So somebody have a foreclosure and they want to apply for a, a conventional loan, they have to wait seven years. But for FHA loan, they only wait three years. So it's easier. Oh, what, where I'm going? I'm going backward. All right. So we will learn more stuff today, part two. So we're gonna learn about income requirement uh, can one borrower have two FHA loans, right? We're going to answer that question. Can the previous FHA loan be used as rental income for the second FHA loan, right? Can an FHA borrower uh, use money from their business bank account for their down payment? So after this 30 minutes, you will all know to answer all these questions. Does FHA loan require reserve? In what situation? You will learn it after this. Does FHA loan allow gift fund? Okay, so you will ha be able to answer all this question afterward. Are you excited? Yeah. Yeah. Who <laughs> <Full> energy? <laughs> he has no. He has so much energy because he did. Yeah. He eat okay. green yesterday. Yeah. He do the ten day challenge. Yeah, everyone, not me. I'm gonna start <laughs> Vegetarian. Yeah. Okay, so this is my breakfast, and it's have celery, spinach, and mango. Where's mine? <laughs> <It's not> <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So, you talk about income requirement. Um, can you read me the first one, Alec? Salaried borrowers, most recent uh, thirty-day period with year-to-date earnings and two years of W-2s. If we use rental income, we will need tax returns. <coughs> 
Thank you, Alex. So, so why they don't con uh, mention about tax return? Look like they only need thirty years, uh, thirty days of pay pay stuff, and then W two of two years. They only ask for rental income uh, tax return when we use re we use rental income. Because actually, they go directly to the IRS and verify the tax. But for us. Pacific wide, we only ask for tax return because we don't want to wait until the lender find out what's going on with our client tax return. Even lender doesn't require it, doesn't mean we don't ask for it. Because, because lender know what we know already, so they trust us. They don't even Because in the past, we only send them a tax return and they verify anyway. Now they don't want a tax return no more. They took one W-2, pay stuff, and then they verify tax return with the IRS. They don't have to spend time looking at two things to see if they are matching or not. Because in the past, when they look, just one tiny little thing that's not the same, they go back and forth with the condition. That waste of time. And they have to spend time reading both uh, transcripts. Now they only read one time. They're getting smarter. Less time consuming, right? So even for conventional loan, that's the same thing. But we always, at Pacific White, ask for a two-year tax return. Uh, and then, can you read me the next one? Sorry, you cannot see. <laughs> OT bonus and tip income must have been received for past two years. Payoffs between one and two years may be acceptable if it was consistently earned for at least one year and led to the minimum. Thank you, Anna. W V O E that written V O E. So, whenever we want to use overtime bonus or uh, tips or commission, we have to have uh, the client, the borrower, have to work have to earn that income for at least two years. And, and most of the time, we have to, use, have to do the written verification of employment to show to the lender how much they earn, uh, the commission or bonus, or to see how consistency it is. Is it going up or going down? It's two years. If someone only earned the overtime for more than a year, what happened? Uh, we will look at of course, that had to be in the tax return. It had to show on the W-2. And in the VOE, we have to see that last year they earned this much. This year they earned more in, uh, in overtime. So if they see there's a good chance this client continue to get um, overtime, then we can use it. But that's, uh, that's a rare case that they accepted. But it, we have to work on, hard on it to fight for a client to get that. But it works sometimes. Like not all the time when they don't have two years that we cannot use their overtime or, or bonus, we can work on it with client uh, with lender to see how they what they ask for to make them satisfy so that uh, we can use that bonus or overtime even though we only have over a year of overtime. Okay. Last one, self employed borrow for everyone who self employed who do ten ninety nine, who self employed, uh, we need two year tax return. Okay. Yes. The that written verification oh. of employment. So well, every time I, I need to use overtime bonus or commission or tips, I always uh, must do a, a written verification of so uh, employment. Have to send you we we normally send it. Uh, there's diff many different ways to get the written VOE. Uh, we can send the form directly to HR and ask them to fill it out or. A lot of company now they do it over uh, some website like the works number and those will charge money like fifty dollars fifty dollars the client have to pay for that yeah but it really quick i actually like those uh, system because we can get the voe right away of course the client have to pay for it but the viewer we send to the hr it takes time to get it they will do it for us but it takes a few days or more any question before we go on all right, rental income. Jeevan, can you read rental income for me? Can you move your head a bit? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> rental income from a principal residence that is being vacated will only be considered if the borrower is relocating due to a new job or job transfer <coughs> that's more than 100 miles from the departing residence. Thank you. <clears throat> so this will answer the question, can one borrower have two FHA loans? Okay, let me explain why. If a couple, when they just married, they bought a condo, right, using FHA loan. And 
after a year or two, they have they 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 have a new job, and they have to and the location that we have to drive like one or two hours. It's more than a hundred miles. How long do we drive for one more than a hundred miles? Is that like uh, two hours? From now to JC, the rush hour is two hours. Two hours. So if 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 some if he had to work in another city that he had to travel more, more than a hundred miles, so now he have to move over there to buy a different house because he doesn't want to commute every day. So when they buy another home in another city uh, with another FHA loan, in the letter of explanation we have to send to the lender saying I am changing job and this job is far away from where my ha my first house is. So this will be my. Uh, my, this I'm buying a home for my own occupier again, so that will be another own occupier property and another FHA loan. So one person can have two FHA loans. Not only that, when he moved to another city, the house that he bought the first time, he can use it for rent. And he can use the rental income if the equity in the home is more than 25%, meaning if he bought that house, if the house value right now is a million dollars, for example, the first home is a million dollars, and if the loan amount is less than seven hundred fifty thousand, that means he have over two hundred fifty thousand equity in the home, more than twenty five percent equity. He can use the rental income from this house, potential rental income, to qualify for the FHA loan that he buying in another city. So this answer our question that yes, people can have two FHA loan if they have a reason and uh, of course they have to qualify for the, the another loan right have to, because this is a full doc loan we, we, we have to look at income okay. um, that's one reason but another reason uh, if a couple buy a condo that the home is too small two years later they have baby and they need a, a, another place to live in with more rooms because the condo is too small what they do, they can buy another home, even in the same city. But because I need another home, because my family ha have additional beautiful babies, so we need more room. So now they have a reason to buy another home and apply for an FHA loan. So Valid we good. Reason. Reason. Yeah, good reason, right? The first one is job relocation. The second one is family extension, right? How about another wife? <laughs> <laughs> Another wife, you gotta ask Alec, he go like <laughs> I, I approve it <laughs> <laughs> Only I like approve, so you have to go through I like to get the loan You'll be in trouble <laughs> okay. All so, the men will vote for you, all the women will beat you <laughs> <laughs> so Alex should run the president of the U.S. next time. Yeah. <laughs> Linda, can you read me the next one? The following is required what? The following is required. An executed lease agreement for minimum of one year and evidence of security deposit and, and or one month's rent is recommended. And appraisal brought, uh, required to documents 25% equity and the property. Thank you so much, Linda. So, so you see, they asked for a 25% equity. So, Linda might ask to do appraisal on the previous home. The borrower have to pay for that appraisal too to make sure they ha he had 25% equity. And uh, because in order for us to use the rental income from the first home, we have to show the lender the lease agreement. And the lease agreement had to be at least one year lease agreement. Never submit a lease agreement with month-to-month -month lease. Lender never want to see month-to-month -month lease. He want to see, they want to see a one year lease agreement, okay? And uh, in this case, we have to provide evidence of security deposit and one month rent. So, so we have to find a, a, a person who rent the property in, at that time to qualify uh, to use the rental income, okay? Any questions? Except an and questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Vita, can you read me this one, the first three, two? Assess requirement, now we talk about money. Uh, two months of bank statements and 60% of retired accounts. Okay, 
So when we submit the loan to, uh, for FHA loan to lender, we only ask for two month bank statement. And why do we want to submit two month bank statement? Anybody knows? Just for cash. Because we we no mm -hmm. because two month bank statement because lender make sure the money was there more than two months. The down payment. If we want to say we put two hundred thousand down payment for the house we buy, the two hundred thousand have to be there, but not just deposit. Because the last two months, we want to show the lender is the money already there. We don't want to show lender that money was just deposit in the last two months because everything just deposit. We have to provide uh, paper trails or explain where the money come from. So uh, all the agent here, your first time when you meet your client, you need to do this. You want to talk to them about money. This is the most important thing. So talk about money to me whenever I encounter a a t first time home buyer or a person who approached me that asking me to help them to buy a home I asked them a question where is your money it's kind of weird to ask people that question but I ask that all the time <laughs> where's your money because people might not leaving their money in the bank account they might leave it somewhere else so I have to say if your money is everywhere I need you to put in your bank account ASAP because the two bank statement that I submit to lender I don't want to see any deposit in it the only thing, the only deposit that I want to see is your salary, not a big check, not cash, because cash is not usable. Lender doesn't allow you cash. So if you, you put 10,000 cash or 100,000 cash in the bank account, that amount of cash will be frozen. You cannot touch it during the process. You just have to leave it there and not able to use it. So what you, if you, we need to talk to our client this in advance. Because if we don't talk about this, what happened at the time you are in contract and we cannot do the loan because the, the client doesn't have any way to find more money to close the transaction and the 100,000 sitting there doing nothing. So what we need to do is we talk to our client about money and the very first appointment. Okay, uh, for people who have 401k, for people who have all the kind of retirement uh, bank account, we can use 60% of those. For example, if the retirement uh, 401k have 100,000 in it, we can use 60,000 in there. As reserve, or we can pull it out for down payment, 60% of it only. Chị Vân Anh, can you read me the business funds? This is... This business is. funds. Ownership is verified uh, through a business license or corporate tax returns. It must indicate 100% full ownership. Vâng Anh, can you use this microphone and talk in here? Because, come on, come on. Because I need you to, so people can uh, hear you. Oh, okay. Just, Am just, I too <laughs> soft? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, read it again. I'm too soft. Now read it again. Ownership is verified through business license or corporate tax returns. And it must indicate 100% full ownership. Evidence that the borrower has full use of the funds and no repayment is required. CPA letter on letterhead. Evidence that the funds withdrawn are not an advancement against future earnings or future cash distributions. CPA letter on the letterhead. Bank statements must not have any abnormal large deposits or source of funds will be required to be documented. Thank you, Kivangam. Thank you so much. No so problem. I will have to go to the, um, uh, the last sentence first. I say bank statement must not have any abnormal large deposit. So when we when our client applying for an FHA loan, right? And he or she provide a business bank statement. Make sure you look at the bank statement. Whenever we receive a bank statement, we want to review it. We want to see if any crazy large deposit was deposited recently, because the lender will question it right away, even though that is the business account. Business account should be showing the pattern. Like if this business, every time they deposit, they deposit 5,000, 7,000, 5,000, 7,000, that had to be like a pattern. Like this month and that, and then the next month, two months look the same, that's okay. But if the business, every you see almost every transaction is $500, $600, and then all of a sudden 10,000 and then 20,000, that doesn't make sense. Like the whole long uh, deposit in there, like 80% of them are 500, you know, dollars, $600, or even $200. And then there are 30% of it, 20,000, 30,000, that doesn't make sense. It had to look consistent. So when you look at all the business, okay, when my mortgage team, 
when you look at the bank statement from the business uh, bank account, you have to look at it carefully. Is it consistently deposited like every day or every once a week or twice a week? And also the amount, are they looking similar? Not exactly the same, no way, because business is not up and down and, and it, but it had to look, it had to make sense, okay? Uh, when it's not making sense, then you have to stop and talk to your client. What's happening? Uh, why, why, this, why this is so large? Normally, people, they will deposit large amount of money when they are about to buy a home, and that's not acceptable, okay? You have a pattern change. Yes. So, so when you look at the bank statement, that's what are you looking for. You're looking for something like a pattern, okay? Okay, also, they asked, when we use the money from the business bank account, the CPA will have to write a letter to confirm that using the money from this bank account won't hurt the business. You see that? So you, you need to know this in advance and advise your client. If you use your money from your business account, there's a big chance lender will require a letter from your CPA. Is that okay? Because a lot of time, people don't want to go to the CPA asking for a letter. It's hard. But if they really, really need to use the bank account from business, then they have to know in advance. So they know, you know, surprise, okay? Uh, and also in this case, the lender require the buyer, the borrower had to be own, had to own the business 100%, a hundred percent because if you only own the business 25% or 50%, how could you use the money from the, the business bank account? Does it make sense? Right? You can't. Because you're not the only owner. You cannot use their bank account, the, the bank account of the company for your own down payment to buy your own home, right? So you're not a good question owner. about that. Okay, good. Um, if you're, fi let's just say you're 50% owner, could you borrow 50% of the money? No. You cannot borrow any money during the time you create, uh, you're doing loan. Really? You cannot, you cannot. Because that means you have another loan on top of the loan. Then how you qualify, right? You not, unless, okay, you, you enter into another loan, then we, they will say, okay, yeah, then what, what your payment? Then they include it into your DTI, right? Because your monthly payment will be in your DTI. So the bank statements is only to what, no, income. Saying? Oh, if you had a uh, fifty percent ownership in the company and you take fifty percent of the like uh, of the money okay, that you question. guys have in the account, good question. That I uh, like for this FHA loan is a no because whenever the guideline says something, it had to be exactly like that. But in conventional loan, it might be able to do it. We might be, but it had to depend on. The lender overlay and the lender uh, also, also depend on the underwriter too. I think I see that situation one time, um, I, I, but I forgot how they solve the problem. I think they do allow <coughs> to use it, but not much. I don't think they can use maximum 50% of whatever in the bank account. I don't think so. Because you own 50% doesn't mean you can take out all 50% or use it. I don't think so. But good question, uh, Joss. <coughs> I can look into it and, and, and find out for you, okay? Good questions. Perfect, thank you. Of course. All right, any question? How but, do you show the evidence uh, the, that the borrower has the full use of funds and no repayment required? The full use of funds from what? It says evidence that the borrower has full use of the funds and no repayment is that's why we need a CPA letter. You see, the CPA had to write in the letter. Oh, my client, uh, this person is okay to use all the money here. They don't need to repay to the business account and it won't hurt the business. Thank you for the question. Very good questions. All questions are good questions. Okay. Linda, can you read this for me? Read the title and the bottom. Reserves requirement. Uh, one to two units per AUS, three to four units properties, three month cash reserves, PITI required, may come from gift. Okay, thank Linda. Okay, so reserve requirement. 
for when you buy just just a single family home there is no reserve requirement okay but when you want one buy one uh, actually you say one or two units per AUS meaning we have to run the the loan application through an automatic underwriting system AUS stands for automatic underwriting system it can be DU or PL LP and when we run through the system and the system always kicks out some requirement or condition and if it requires uh, reserve then we will have to bring in reserve but for me most of the time for the one unit I don't ever see any reserve okay I, I, for, I don't know about the two unit but most of the time I don't see any reserve um, for the three to four units it's always requires reserve it's a three month cash reserve PITI P, P mean P I mean principal uh, interest P I principal and interest T tax, tax I, I interest right insurance. so okay why people want to use FHA loan to buy two unit three unit four unit why no don't think they yeah they take advantage of it right they they can because they can at the same time they can live in it at own occupy and they can rent it out the other units that they don't live in this is the best way to invest in real estate and they don't have to down so much yes they only they only have to down the minimum requirement also and also for the like the uh, FHA loan the lim the loan limit is the county loan limit but for for example for Santa Clara County for one unit loan limit is nine hundred seventy thousand, but for four unit, it's one point eight million dollars. Again, this is really good loan program. If somebody qualify, but they have to qualify for a big loan amount in order to get into that, right? Really awesome. Uh, so if if you have, it's hard to find four unit, three unit, and two unit right now. People are holding off to it, good making good money, right? But if they can use FHA to buy. Uh, four unit, three unit, th two unit. That's awesome. Just Good investment. Of the OPM, other people's money. Yeah, use people money to leverage yeah. your investment. People paying uh, their rent, the rent and, and the you rent. use that rent to pay for mm -hmm. your mortgage. So you maybe you live in that property for free yeah. with only three point five percent down payment. Awesome, right? Yeah. Really awesome. So we should think about buying more. Du uh, duplex, triplex, and and fourplex. Okay, I need someone to read this for me. Vita, you want to read the gift fund? Read the uh, first okay. one. Um, acceptable services may be provided by borrower's family member, employer, or labor union. Um, close. close friend with documented interest in the borrower. Charitable organization or governmental agency entity providing homeowners ownership assistance. Note only family members may provide gift equity. Okay. Okay, so I, I only go backward. So do you know what gift of equity is? Okay, let me explain it. So, I'm doing one right now. The dad mm -hmm. give his son a condo, but he want the son to take over the mortgage. So it's, the only way we do it is to go as a purchase. So the dad sell the son, the, uh, sell the condo to his son. Uh, I think the, uh, the condo is worth in like 600,000. So he sell to his son, but he only want the son to pay for the mortgage. So he give his son a uh, uh, the down payment by the equity. Let me say it, it's e easier to understand. So for example, I forgot the number, but the home value is 600,000 and the loan amount is 350. Okay, 350 loan amount in the house. So the dad say, I only want my son to, to do to take this home and pay mortgage for the three hundred fifty thousand. So that means he got, the son only borrow a mortgage of three hundred sixty fifty thousand. But the home value is six hundred thousand. So he, the father give the son two hundred fifty thousand in the house. You see, because the house is worth six hundred thousand, the loan amount is three hundred fifty. So the father have two hundred fifty thousand equity in the home. You see what I'm saying here? So 250 equity in the home 
the father give it to the son too as his down payment so the son don't have to bring in any money because the 250 down payment is paying by the dad using the equity of the house so in here said only family member can provide gift of equity in this case father and son sister and sister brother and brother mother and you know like have to be family to mm -hmm. give give of equity it makes sense because friend doesn't give friend give of equity right so i do this loan a lot for people who give a house to their children and the children doesn't have a down payment uh, but need to do a loan and they, the parent only need the, the children to pay for the mortgage. That's how we do it. Okay. Um, the fund, the gift fund uh, can come from family member, employer or labor union or close friends uh, or charity organization, mm -hmm. governmental agency, a lot of places. So this is for FHA loan. It's FHA loan kind of easy on gift, uh, gift funds so for conventional loan they don't allow so many things like this for average loan it's allowed gift funds in a much easier way okay all right document requires Alec, can you read the document requirements a gift letter signed and dated by don a donor and borrower that includes the donor's name address phone number relationship to the borrower dollar amount and statement that no repayment is required okay so this is one of the condition like we have to whenever we want to use a gift fund we have to submit to the lender the gift letter and the gift letter has to have donor name uh, address phone number relationship to the borrower dollar amount okay and statement that no repayment required so we only have the template of the gift fund uh, gift letter so we can have the donor sign it and the borrower sign it and the amount and where the money gonna come from that's easy the second one uh, can you read me the second uh, gift uh, uh, requirement Linda number two evidence evidence that uh, evidence the transfer of gift funds with with one of the following if verified in the borrower's account obtain donors bank statement showing withdrawals and evidence of the evidence deposit into the borrower's account thank you linda i want to just step that so i can explain so most of the time we don't want the donor give a check to the borrowers and then the borrower deposit a check to the borrower account i don't want that because look if if the the donor give the check and the borrower deposit that check to the bank account the donor will have to provide bank statement the donor bank statement mm -hmm. to show to the lender okay the money is really from the donor it had to show how the money get out of the donor bank statement and that is a lot of th people a lot of donors they say i don't want to give my bank statement so what we do to avoid to ask the donor for bank statement we ask the donor to go to the uh, their bank to buy a cash check and the cash check will be paying to the title company not the borrower so when the, the cash check go directly to the the title company from the donor we don't need to provide any bank statement from the donor see that okay linda the next one oh, if not verified in the borrower's account obtain the certified funds eg certified check money order customer's check wire transfer or other official check mm evidencing payment to the borrowers or settlement agent and donors bank statement evidencing sufficient funds for the gift amount note cost on hand is not acceptable source of donors gift funds thank you linda so the first requirement uh, the, actually the second requirement for the transfer of the gift fund is like we talked we already talked about it we can use we can use uh, a money order. We can use cash check, wire transfer to to give to the donor can go to the bank buy one of those, and that go directly to the title company. And we don't need to ask the donor for the bank statement. So uh, so the rule of thumb is 
the, the, the gift fund go from the donor directly to the title company under a different form of either cash check, money order, or oh, wow. wire transfer. Nice. Then we don't have to bother the donor asking them for the bank statement. So just remember, when you talk to your client the first time, uh, talk about the money first, like where your money and your money is supposed to be in the bank account one or two months. And then also, if you need gift fund, do not move money around because, because people, they have a tendency to go home and ask their parents to give the money and put in their bank account. That not, that's a no-no. So do not move money around. The no-no keep the money where it is, and then we will provide you a gift letter. In that gift letter, you only need to provide your, your mom or your dad, whoever give you the money in that letter, and they sign it. Then the money will go from the donor directly to the title company at the very end before you like when you sign your final loan doc and you get your home in a few days. Don't move the money around at all. So you have to talk to your uh, borrower, first time home buyer, about the gift fund at the very beginning so that they don't move money around because at the moment they go home because we didn't talk to them about it. What happened if they go home, they ask their parent or brother or sister who willing to give them the money for down payment. They ask them to uh, give them a check and then they go deposit into their bank account. The next thing we know is we have to ask for the donor bank account uh, statement, bank statements. And donor, normally they're not happy giving a bank statement. Okay, so talk about it with your client. Any questions? Uh, Why don't we just talk? Any question at all? No question, Anna? No. How much maximum one gift? Can good, give? good. Um, at, at much as at much at you uh, need. Uh, they don't uh, like a hundred percent gift fund is okay all right any question if no question um, so it's time to call your friends families and past clients to talk about FHA loan yeah. <laughs>